this is called a catastrophic failure. So is this, and this. And all of these power supplies are the Gigabyte GP P750GM, or closely related GP P850GM. One of these catastrophically failed while under only 60% load. And out of the 10 or so units that we bought from Newegg or acquired from viewers, we had several other catastrophic failures. During the course of testing, we blew three fuses from our power supply load tester, and we toasted a Gigabyte RTX 3080 that was attached to one of the power supplies. A shocking 50% of these failed in an explosive capacity while we were testing them. That's some pretty good odds for fireworks. So today we're gonna to be diagnosing this issue the best that we're able to here, and looking at some of the trigger points for failure. We'll also be talking about what you should do if you had one of these dumped on you during Newegg's shuffle while it was trying to offload its unsellable explosive e-waste alongside the highly desirable video cards. We're sponsoring our own video today. Store.gamersnexus.net currently has a 10% off discount code active. Just type in send help at checkout for 10% off, representing how we feel after reviewing these power supplies. The hugely popular GN wireframe desk-sized mouse mats are in stock and shipping now, featuring a unique, highly detailed design filled with PC components. There's blue stitching at the border and a custom blue rubber underside as well. Our GN Volt large mod mats are also available on back order and are coming back in stock soon. These sell out really fast, so if you want to guarantee you get one in the September restock, Place a back order for this PC building anti-static work surface today, filled with useful wiring diagrams, screw tracking grids, and built with heat resistant material for tube bending. We spent a huge amount of our own time and money getting to the bottom of this power supply issue. So it'd be a big help if you visit store.gamersaccess.net to grab a mod mat, shirt, mouse mat, or other item today. Send help. The power supplies we're looking at today were getting purged through Newegg's shuffle, where it tries to dump unsellable uh, e-waste binned product alongside highly desirable things, but still charge you for both of them, uh, so that it can get rid of some of its inventory and clear up shelf space. So we're gonna be looking at these. The power supplies for the 750 watt model were about $130. We bought several of them, we requested several from viewers, and so we've got a pretty good sample size. And we suspect that at some point, these power supplies may end up getting uh, dropped for a loss as well, because the price has been slowly descending as to have the aggregate review score has been descending on Newegg's own website and Amazon's as well, actually. So Gigabyte power supplies online right now, these specific models at least, uh, aren't faring too well in user reviews. They didn't fare well in Eris's testing previously, a power supply reviewer, we'll get into his content soon enough. And uh, so we acquired 10 of them. And a big thanks to our viewers as well, who helped us get some of these many months ago. We've been doing everything from endurance tests, which took a long time, to full-on power supply testing. So we're gonna try and diagnose it today. First of all, these are not the same as the similarly named Gigabyte AOR's GPAP750GM and GPAP850GM. Those are fine, at least as far as we're aware. And we're instead talking only about the 750 and 850 units that we mentioned and have shown on the table here because Gigabyte makes multiple models. Gigabyte via Amazon does what it can to cover up this mess by lumping together all of its products, but even manipulating the average listing score can't save these power supplies from being prone to combustion. These bad reviews from users correspond with our findings as well. In our testing, we're gonna give you the core details right up front. We have a lot to talk about today, but we do wanna get the bulk of this out there immediately. So in our testing, 50% of units failed catastrophically during or after overpower protection testing. Some failed with 60% load just after the first overpower protection testing pass. We were able to identify the often MOSFETs that exploded specifically, and we'll talk about all of that. And also this will serve as a bit of an educational piece for power supply testing for you as well, if you're curious about it. In a survey that we conducted of buyers of these power supplies where the data was collected via voluntary online submission from our YouTube community page. 16% of users reported that their power supplies failed in such a way that they were no longer usable, and we did filter out data that looked bad. We required uh, serial numbers, things of that nature, to isolate this. And then we aggregated the data from the reviews on newegg.com separately, where we saw 54% of the customer reviews, and there are a lot of them, were of power supplies that failed. The data suggests that this is probably a bad product. Bad product 
by the way, is a fair thing to say. We've sometimes seen this platitude, not really sure their origin, this platitude that gets posted every now and then in comments about bad products don't exist, only bad prices exist. No, 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 bad products exist. We have tested many of them. Sometimes they try to kill us. Even despite that though, companies are absolutely allowed to make mistakes. These are complicated things to make, look at it. And uh, although it is well documented at this point and failures of this magnitude are very preventable, we could understand if Gigabyte shipped some exploding units, realized it was a problem, and then recalled it and fixed it. What we won't stand for though, is when the bad product is getting pushed on people knowingly who are in a vulnerable position. These, of course, are the people who, especially a few months ago when all this started, were desperate for a video card, especially at MSRP, finally had a chance to buy one, and then Newegg said, you gotta take this. And those people, if they were so fortunate, uh, would be in the best position if they didn't need the power supply because they had one, they put it on a shelf, and were uncertain of what to do with it. But for the people who ended up using them, uh, if it worked out for you, excellent. We don't have data to suggest that it will continue to do so, but maybe it will. And uh, if it didn't work out for you, that sucks because you didn't have a lot of recourse for a long time with these. First off, the biggest problem with all of this was that Newegg wouldn't take returns of a dead PSU without also requiring a return of the video card. When the RTX 30 series was being released, Newegg bundled these power supplies with RTX 30 series cards, and it seemed like a good deal at first glance. However, at that point, the first glance was also the only glance, because the video card was gone if you took more than just one glance. We're not sure the exact definition of a glance and the duration of it, but you get the idea. So within 45 nanoseconds, GPUs are gone on Newegg, especially back when they first came out, and that meant you bought a power supply, whether you needed it or not, in a lot of cases. Now, of course, in the worst of this market, anyone who won the lottery ticket to get an MSRP video card probably was going to stick with the, the payout of that lottery ticket, uh, even after the attachment item, the power supply, maybe failed or became undesirable. If you had one of these things fail and you had to do some sort of warranty process or return process, there's a chance your video card goes away with it. That was what Newegg was requiring it for some time from what we understand. And uh, also, if you wanted to return it, you had to, again, at least for a long while, it was a big controversy online too, send everything back with it. So enough for backstory, let's do the teardown on the power supplies. We'll get Patrick Stone in to do that. He did all the testing for this as well. And all testing was performed prior to disassembly. As a reminder, do not disassemble power supplies, at least if you don't know what you're doing. It can be dangerous or potentially deadly if done improperly, but we've taken all necessary precautions for this. So we attempted to do a root cause analysis on these PSUs by opening them up and looking at the individual components. And what we found was that some of the parts inside the PSUs weren't all from the same vendors. And this differed based on the model, and in some cases, maybe just random chance. We're not really sure. Uh, but when we looked in there, we, we did find different parts. Now, this makes sense if you've got like an 850 watt unit and a 750 watt unit, and they have different parts because there's different outputs, so you're gonna have to have different parts. But even still, maybe they should be from the same vendor, uh, the same source. What's strange though, is when you've got an 850 watt unit over here, and an 850 watt unit over here, from the exact same family, supposed to be the same, and there are different parts. So it makes us wonder if maybe there was some kind of silent fix during the manufacturing cycle of these power supplies, or Maybe there was a component shortage. We don't really know. So what we did do is we went and looked at the individual components to try and see what the differences were. And in the 750 watt unit, we have uh, a brand named Jilin Sino, and they made the MOSFETs on the APFC and the primary switching. But then the MOSFETs in the 850 watt unit were a little bit different. If we come over here and look at this 850 watt unit, uh, we do have one of them missing, but uh, these guys right here were from a brand called NCE Power. Then if you go and look at the uh, DC 12 volt output, you look at the filtering caps over there on the 750 watt unit, and this is true for most of the 750 watt units we looked at, uh, the conductive polymer caps, uh, they have this orange here, and this little CS marker beside them, uh, indicates that they're from a company called uh, Chinsan. But uh, then, if we move over to the 850 watt unit, 
and this is representative of most of the 50 watt units that we tested, uh, no longer do we see orange, we now see blue. And this belongs to a company called Lilon. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different. If we look at this other 850 watt unit, this guy right here, uh, it should be blue, and it should be Lilon, but it's not, it's red, and it's Tipo. So the conductive polymer caps were different between the 750 and the 850, and different between different models of the 850. It, it didn't stop there though, if we keep going, uh, if we look at the 750's aluminum electrolytic ca caps near this DC uh, 12 volt output filtering area, you've got these green and gold ones. Uh, these green and gold ones were from a company we hadn't even heard of before, uh, CHN cap. And then if you look at the configuration, it's pretty similar between the 750 and the 850, but in this 850, we have black and gray ones, and these black and gray or black and silver ones are from a company we just mentioned a minute ago, Tipo. Uh, and once again, if we look at another 850, side by side, no longer do we have black and gray, but black and bronze, or black and gold, whatever you want to call it. And these are from a company we hired of also, Lilon. So it's just kind of strange that uh, we've got two products from the exact same family with different components in them. Uh, we would really like to see more consistency in the components. So take a look at this, for instance. The bolt cap. This is a, it's a pretty typical bolt cap. Nippon Chemicon, uh, 600 microfarad. And if we look at the 850 watt units, hey, look at this. All looks the same. Same vendor, Nippon Chemicon, Nippon Chemicon. Only difference between the 750 and 850 is the size of the cap. 680 microfarad versus 820 microfarad. So we'd like to see that kind of consistency across the whole family, but we don't. And that makes us wonder, what, were, what was Gigabyte doing? Were they like bargain sourcing the components? Um, if that's the case, that's not exactly what you want out of a $100 to $150 price range PSU. A brief interruption from Stone's work to talk about some assumptions. So we think Gigabyte probably knew shortly after these units started shipping to market that there were some serious problems. And what's known uh, classically in the industry in specific terminology as an oops moment. We think that the return rate was probably high and that Gigabyte probably already made a lot of these. This makes the oops moment a higher severity oops known as an oopsie doopsie, which is what Gigabyte was saying when it realized that there was a problem. At this point, Gigabyte had already sold them to retailers like Newegg, so they just let the distribution continue through those channels. We don't know if this is still happening or if the power supplies are still being produced. Gigabyte may have killed them in the manufacturing process. However, at the time of the 30 series launch and for at least several months after, Newegg has had a lot of stock of them. Then what made the situation worse for customers was that as the number of returns and bad reviews continued to escalate, Newegg stopped allowing returns of the power supplies by themselves. This indicated that they knew they were suspect and did not want them back. That's your garbage now. We sold it to you. In the end, what appears to have happened may not be precisely illegal, uh, but it is generally regarded as a bad move. The negative user reviews and suspicion got some test data to back it all up back in November. Power supply review veteran Eris published a video review of his 750 watt unit failing with fireworks on his YouTube channel during normal testing. He attempted to report the failures to Gigabyte, but they basically said that there weren't any problems as far as they could see. Since then, we've had viewers reach out with their own Gigabyte power supply failures and ask us to investigate these problems that obviously exist. So we decided to connect with Eris to compare notes. In Eris' review, he recommended that Gigabyte quote, lower the OPP and the 12 volt OCP trip point. OPP we've already defined, and OCP is just overcurrent protection. Both of these are protections that help prevent the power supply from melting components. They're two out of six common protections that exist on high quality power supplies, and we'll talk about just how high the trip points were on the Gigabyte power supplies and what we did to validate Eris' testing later in the video. Our initial research for this was to figure out if it was just a hate parade on Newegg and Gigabyte, or if the product was actually bad. We really weren't sure when we were getting into this. We knew that Eris had one unit explode, but we didn't know if that was uh, resolved in the time since he had reviewed it, if it was a one-off or whatever. And certainly the evidence was piling for a hate parade on Newegg because of the bundling with the GPU situation. So we started looking into it and we did a complete analysis of the Newegg reviews and conducted a survey, once again, of our YouTube community 
users. From Newegg reviews, we learned that it wasn't just the 750 watt model that was failing. The GP-P850GM had similar reviews, though notably fewer of them. DOA was the most frequently reported issue at 38.2% for the 750 and 38.9% for the 850. Other commonly occurring user reported failure modes were over time at 8% at worst, under load at about 2 to 3%, and random shutdowns at about 2% to 3%. There was also destruction of other components as one of the failure modes at 4% or 3% depending on the power supply. Overall, the GPP750GM reviews posted 54.3% DOA or rendered unusable, and the 850 was similar at 50%. These numbers from the reviews are staggering. From 209 total reviews at the time we originally did this data collection months ago, 112 of them described their PSUs as being unusable, with 80 of the 112 being DOA. That's too much DOA. Even in spite of that, our test data more closely resembled the Newegg reports than our user survey. Half of our units failed. To be clear, most of the failures are from over power protection testing, and most users will not put their power supply through that type of load. Uh, however, it should survive it. That's what they're designed to do, and that's why it's called a protection, not a self-destruction device. And even still, uh, we obviously don't have enough sample size to test all of the failure types, and Gigabyte has potential to have many in here. Uh, users in the review section of these products, we don't suspect, would be triggering OPP when they're failing to the extent that we were doing. And so we think most likely there's uh, what would be known as a problem in the power supplies beyond just the overpower protection circuit. When we tested, we used four 750s and four 850s initially. Three of the four 750s failed, and one of the 850s failed in that initial round. Of the four failures, two of the 750s and one of the 850s failed before overpower protection. That's the bad part. The other 750 watt unit failed a few minutes after OPP testing. Protocols were followed in such a way that it modeled Eris's testing as closely as possible because initially we were just trying to do good science and cross-validate. During our testing, our load testers suffered three blown fuses and we lost the RTX 3080. However, the failure of that 3080 was not specifically traced back to the power supply. We were unable to root cause it, at least as of now. There's a possibility that the graphics card died on its own. Uh, it's a Gigabyte graphics card, so unfortunately for Gigabyte, if the video card's death was unrelated to Gigabyte's power supplies, it is still related to Gigabyte. We're not sure what killed it. It may have had its own design fault, but that's still a Gigabyte problem. Anyway, it was literally out of the box, brand new, unboxed for the test. It worked with no problems for a few days, and then it died. Possibly related, eight of the 209 Newegg reviews also reported destroyed components, but most were linked to SATA power connections. For each of the devices that we tested, we ran the devices for two minutes at 20% load, 60% load, and 100% load. Then we went to 10 second intervals at 110%, 120%, 130%, and 140%, or until overpower protection triggered. Once overpower protection triggered, we let the PSU reset itself, and then turned it back on at the point just before it triggered. So if it failed at 140%, we jumped back to 130% to start searching for the exact overpower protection trigger point. From there, we'd use these little guys right here, and we would nudge these things up just a little bit at a time, each of these uh, current levels on each of the rails, to find exactly where the overpower protection trigger point was. At that point, the power supply would trigger and trip again. We'd let it reset, and then we'd give it about five minutes, just like what Eris was doing in his testing, and then we'd bring it back online at 60% load so that we could see if it was still working properly. To validate the methodology, we ran the test on a known good PSU before moving on to the Gigabyte units. The known good PSU went through the testing protocol without problems. During all the tests, our Sun Moon SM8800 provided precise and accurate input control by allowing easily repeatable adjustment of the amperage down to the nearest hundredth of an ampere. When reading the output, the SM8800 provided voltage reporting accuracy to the nearest hundredth of a volt. The SM220, the top unit, provided accurate power measurements down to the hundredth of a watt and amperage measurements to the nearest thousandth of an amp. Both load testing devices allowed us to control the experiment in a way that would have been nearly impossible to do in a PC using synthetically generated loads. 
The ease of monitoring and adjustment ensured that our testing and results were reliable and consistent. We tested our first two purchased 850s in February, actually, in an effort to replicate Eris's exploded MOSFETs, but both of those units performed as they should have, triggering OPP and resetting with no issues. We then tested a viewer-provided 750 in March and a viewer-provided 850 in early May that both passed all tests without issues. By the time we got to our fifth unit, we were beginning to think that the whole situation was maybe blown out of proportion by the internet, and maybe it was just hate about being forced to buy a video card with a power supply that was undesirable. That's when things changed for the worse, or, or the better, depending on if you're gigabyte. The fifth test was on another viewer unit, and this time it was an 850-watt model. The unit survived the initial ramp and triggered OPP at 140% load. When we brought it back to 130% and began incrementing to find the exact OPP trigger point, that's when one of the APFC MOSFETs exploded. The exploded FET was an NCE Power NCE65T180F. Oddly, the failure was in a different brand of component, a different model of power supply, and a different location within the power supply than in Eris's testing. This is complicated thing. The next power supply we tested replicated Eris's failure exactly. The components inside were the same as what Eris had found in his failed unit, and the two components that failed were in the exact same location, and the way they exploded was eerily similar to what Eris had shown back in November or so. The most interesting thing about the failure was that it happened after the unit successfully shut down on OPP testing at 140%, and its exact trigger point of 133%. In other words, it survived OPP testing the way it was supposed to. It passed. It was almost through. Uh, and then it, it failed at 60%. So we waited five minutes after the 140%, the 133% testing. We turned it on. We put a 60% load on the power supply. And that's when the catastrophic failure occurred. It blew up. It would have made sense if the failure occurred under a heavier load. But 60% is not a heavy load. It's a very normal workload for most computers to be under, at, at least in our space, and to uh, explode at 60% is just unacceptable for any power supply. So 60% load uh, is, is easy to achieve on a 750 watt power supply with a high-end GPU and a high-end CPU playing a game. At that point, we decided to go all in and acquire four more 750 watt units from Newegg. The next unit we tested failed while attempting to locate the exact OPV trigger point. This time, the right APFC FET failed with a mild spark and then a small puff of smoke. This one shared the same failure location as our first failed 850-watt unit, so now we'd had two different MOSFET brands fail in the same location of the design on two different models. After sharing these findings with Eris and some other professionals in the PSU space, we began to lean more towards manufacturing or design as the likely cause of failure. Since we thought we might be onto something, we did what we do and went a little bit crazier with it. We rigged up a bunch of thermocouples to unit number nine and worked on some more testing. For this one, interestingly, it popped the same FET as the previous one did, and the two power supplies had sequential serial numbers 2396 and 2397. The MOSFETs are rated for operation up to 150 degrees Celsius, and the point of failure we were able to reach uh, with a thermocouple probe, so it's not an exact measurement of the failure point, but it was 195 degrees Celsius. Over temperature protection, regardless of the delta, internal versus external on this, which is not, by the way, 45 degrees, that's insane, the OTP should have kicked in and shut the unit down. We, at this point, had seen enough to validate Eris's testing and needed to put a cap on our own time investment because it had been and still is dragging on for months at this point. We would not be comfortable using these at this point. We decided to go all in on this and do one final run, and that was for endurance testing. We needed to build a system that we were okay with losing any of the parts in it to the power supply in the event the power supply took something out with it if it died. So naturally, we built this computer. This computer is filled almost entirely with gigabyte components, so we were more willing to part with them if they went up in flames. The RTX 3080 did. We later replaced it with a 6900 XT. Otherwise, we had 16 gigabytes of gigabyte DDR4 4800 megahertz memory running at 3600, Z590 master motherboard LF2360, which I actually don't want to lose that one, and a Corsair 5000D airflow. We set it up to run loops of playing games and running synthetic benchmarks, switching between them with a 60% power load and planned to let it run for about one month as that was the most common overtime failure interval from Newegg data. That endeavor, by the way, 
lasted 72 hours before we walked in one day and the screen was black and the room smelled like the magic smoke had come out of something. And that was, again, the GPU. Take a, a moment to remember it. Being uncertain what actually killed the GPU, we continued on with the 6900 XT, and the system ended up, after crashing several times due to AMD driver issues that are unrelated, ended up surviving. We only endurance tested one unit, and we can't account for all the types of workloads that are out there, so unfortunately this is not conclusive. But we thought it'd be worth trying it just to see. We can't be 100% certain what the failure is, but we have some pretty good ideas at this point. So our belief is that a protection circuit needs improvement. It could be OCP, it could be OTP, it could be OPP. But without a lot more testing, and by a lot, we mean basically being in the lab that Gigabyte should have access to with hundreds of these, that we, we can't draw a conclusion. So we strongly believe that uh, these failures could be prevented with better design and probably better component selection. We also agree with Eris's suggestions in his written review that, quote, over 130% uh, OPP and OCP triggering points are not good. They should be triggering sooner than this. It's not necessarily a good thing that the power supply can sort of run at 130% if a user tries to push it to run at that level, uh, it should be shutting down sooner. When we reached out to Gigabyte to ask a few questions about these two power supply models, they eventually responded. They stood by the decisions to use the MOSFETs that failed in OPP testing. It's interesting that for OPP, Gigabyte informed us that the 750 watt unit was designed for an OPP range of 825 watts to 925 watts. They said the 850 watt unit was designed for 950 to 1050. The reason this is interesting is because that's not where they actually triggered. All of our units exceeded those ranges for OPP. So this breaches the intended design already. Failure detection isn't solely on the OPP circuit. Another protection that could have been prevented again is OTP. In Gigabyte's response, the company wrote that OTP in these units is designed to trigger over 55 degrees Celsius ambient at full load. As long as the cooling fan here is working, then the ambient temperature of the power supply should never reach that point. It would have been more beneficial to monitor the heat sinks of the MOSFETs, but that starts getting into cost and design decisions. So the circuitry here needs revisions. And some of the components are questionable too, like some of these capacitors uh, we are suspicious of. The GP P850GM failure rates are not good, but the 750 is somehow tragically worse. It's actually the worst we've ever seen in any electronics product we've worked on uh, in the last 14 or 15 or so years. So the quality of the MOSFETs and capacitors is questionable. The protection circuitry needs improvement. That leads us to the obvious conclusion of don't willingly buy this and probably don't accept it if Noig's going to try and force it on you either because that's stupid and Noig needs to learn. If you already have one of these running, just like we did in our endurance testing rig that was running for a month, it's possible there will never be a problem. Not all of them are bad. Again, ours ran nearly endlessly, switching between types of load and idle periods and everything, like a user scenario, for a month. No issues. Except for the dead RTX 3080. But um, we still don't know if that was a different gigabyte issue. If you are thinking about buying this power supply, don't. Simple enough. If you have it in your system and it's running, it seems like it's been running fine, then we're not going to tell you to rip it out. We have data that suggests it may be fine, and it might be fine forever. We don't know that. We couldn't run it that long. It's a long time. But uh, I'll break rank here and tell you what I personally would think, and you can decide what you want to do. Personally, I, I would not be comfortable leaving this running in my computer. I would remove it, and I would probably very aggressively pursue a refund with Newegg. That's what I would do. But I'm also acutely aware that we have some data that suggests it may be fine forever, just like I'd be aware if some other publication ran this and I had it in my system. I would still take it out. That's just my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Lastly, and actually most importantly, we don't think e-waste that's stuck on shelves should be forcibly uh, pushed on users who are desperate to purchase a device when it is in short supply. This was clearly a, a poor quality product. Newegg almost certainly knew about this in advance. That's why it was part of the shuffle. And this should have been handled between Newegg and Gigabyte. It's actually worse if they work together and still push it on the users. That's a lot more terrifying. But anyway, customers shouldn't have to bear the burden of a known bad product and finding a local e-waste recycler near them to get rid of it. So that's it for this one. Simple enough, don't buy it. 
And uh, thanks for watching. As always, it took us a long time to do this. If you want to support this type of work, go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out with this. So thank you for the opportunity uh, by watching the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.